Hello there, my stamping friends. It's Jackie Ballheis from Clomp and Stampers. I have, I don't know if we want to call it a technique, probably more of a tip and a trick to share with you today for using your Stampin' Blends. There is this little problem that sometimes bugs me and I'm going to show you how to solve it. Now we're using brand new products that were just released. The Blessings of Home is the name of the stamp set. You know, we get new products and I can never remember the names of all of them. Um, but then we're going to talk about using the Stamparatus and Stampin' Blends and a little trick that I think you're going to like if you like using Stampin' Blends. Now, before I dive into what we're doing today, just a quick reminder, there will be a blog post that goes with this video. I do that all the time. The link will be down in the description of the video. It'll take you over to my blog post. I'll have pictures of the card I share with you today, as well as all the cutting measurements. So if you'd like to make them, everything will be there for you. And then a list of all of the supplies and products that I use. That way, if you'd like to order anything, it's super easy for you. Now, I mentioned we're using products from the new mini catalog that just came out. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a copy of these catalogs, again, go over to my website or blog, kind of same thing, links down in that video description, and over there at the top, click on catalogs, and you'll be able to request one, and I would love to pop one in the mail to you. And don't forget, it's celebration time. That means when you order product from Stampin' Up! in January and February, every $50 that you order, you get to select a free item. So that information is on the website too. I'm just keep pointing you over there. But we're here on the video today to learn a new tip and trick for using Stampin' Blends and your Stamparatus, and we're gonna make a cute card while we're learning this new little tip. So let's go ahead, flip the camera down, and let's get to work. Boy, I have a lot of stuff all over the table here. So just real quick, this is what that mini catalog looks like. So if you need one, go ahead and request one. We are using products that are part of the Heart and Home suite. Now, I don't always show you things in the catalog, but since this is brand new, I wanted to just show you. It's a beautiful suite with a couple of different stamp sets and dies, designer series paper, and other products. So this is in this catalog. I just want to share that. And then I wanted to share, I used up almost all of this one, what this designer series paper looks like, because it's so pretty. And we're gonna use just a little bit of it on our project today. But the front side here, well, I don't know, I guess we'll call it the front side, has a lot of floral. It has this piece with the bees and the greenery. It's very textured. If you can look up close, it almost looks like it's on a, a canvas type texture. But then what I really like is you flip it over and the back side of these are all kind of a wood grain at an angle, you know, bigger, smaller. So it's some great just white and grays and black wood grain paper. So you could use these on so many different projects. So that is that paper. The other thing I want to mention before I dive completely into our project and these new products that we have today, that light's shining funny. Let's get that out of the way. There we go. Um, is that we all know there's lots of supply chain and shipping issues going on right now. So the products I'm using, when I recorded this video, they were all available, but it's possible that something may have gone into what we call non-orderable status, meaning it's sold out and they're waiting to get more of the product in. So if you try to order any of these and it won't let you, it says currently unavailable, jot it down on your wish list and try again next time. So I just wanted to say that before we got started. Now, we're using the Stamparatus. Let's see, we need to get rid of that pad because it is um, a red rubber one, so you don't need that extra pad in there. And what I'm going to do is I have two um, different quarter sheets of basic white here. We're gonna have a little bit of scrap, but then we'll just use it for other things. And I am gonna make sure I stick this really nice and tight up into the corner of my Stamparatus. And then my flower, I'm gonna put more towards the left and down. You know, if you can, you wanna kinda of stay away from these edges because it's gonna stamp better if we get a little bit further out. So remember, key is to keep it tucked in there nice and tight. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're using Memento. So we're gonna ink this up really good. And we're going to stamp two of these. And you'll find out why here 
in just a second. So give that some good pressure. And if it doesn't look quite as black as you want it, actually that's stamped pretty nice, but we're gonna go ahead and do it again. And this is why I say the key is to keep it really tight up in that corner because you can stamp multiple times and they're always gonna stamp right on top of each other. And look at how much deeper that black got. So there's the first one. Now we're gonna stick this one in here and we're gonna do the same thing. And you're probably wondering what in the world is she doing? But it's all gonna come to light here as we progress through making this card. Now this one, oh, that didn't even stamp very good. Again, beauty of the Stamparatus. Anytime an image doesn't stamp perfect for you or you miss part of it, I either didn't put ink there or didn't press there. So now we can make sure we push in that spot. There we go, look at that image. Okay, now what we're going to do is take this out. And we're gonna keep our scrap paper. We're gonna just set that aside for a second and we are going to color in just one flower. Now Stampin' Blends is kind of a personal choice whether you like to go first with your light and then add your dark or do you like to start with dark? It doesn't really matter. Um, me personally, I like to do light first and I like to do one part at a time, like one petal at a time. I think you get the best coverage that way. And then after I've done the light, we put some dark on there and then we're gonna come back with this light. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna color in all the petals here. So again, you can see, add some dark and then we can kind of blend it up in there. Okay, and it's, you know, the nice thing with Stampin' Blends as opposed to Stampin' Right is the fact that they are alcohol based. So you can continue to just layer more and more color on here without it like beating up and fraying up your paper. You know, Stampin' Rights, you could never do that. So we're just kind of getting that dark down in there. And let me, we're gonna just speed up the video here while I finish coloring this. And then for our center, we're gonna just use some crumb cake. And the same thing, we're gonna put some light, we'll put a little bit of dark in the middle, and then come back. That green, I use the soft succulent for the, for the leaves. So there we go, that is all colored in. Now with Stampin' Blends, make sure when you put your tops on, you, you know, push down like that and you hear that click, then you know they're on there good. You always wanna keep these covered when you're done using them. So we're gonna set that aside. Now what I wanna do for the next step is we are gonna bring our Stamparatus back in. And remember what I said about making sure that this is tucked in here. After I've colored this, we're gonna come back with that memento again and we are going to stamp another layer of black. You will find, um, now this black was pretty dark to start with, but you will find that when you put those Stampin' Blends on there, it kinda, we we'll call it dulls, or I feel like it lightens that black, cause you're putting that color over the black. But we want our image to have that really nice crisp, and look at how much more that pops now, the black. So I just put black on it again after those blends. And you'll see another sample that I have to share with you when I'm done here. I did not do that, so you'll kinda see the difference. Now we need to do some die cutting. So we are gonna take the dies that go with the stamp set and I'm gonna get the big one out here and we're gonna cut out this image. Actually, we're gonna cut out both of them. So I'm gonna do that and I will be right back. This is a scrap, I'll use that for something else. Here is the one that's not colored and then here is the one that's colored. Now we actually wouldn't have even had to cut it out if we didn't want to um, because we're gonna have to come in here with our scissors and we are gonna do a little fussy cutting because the only thing I want of this image is that flower. So we're gonna go around, oh, I need to get a little bit closer. Actually, it probably, I shouldn't have even used the, the die to cut it out because I need to get everything closer. So we're just gonna go around, get as close as we can to this one and cut this one out. There we go. So this technique is actually called spotlighting because what we did is we took an image and then we stamped it a second time and we're gonna stick some dimensionals under here because we like lots of dimensionals on our projects. 
and we'll peel those off. And I am going to adhere this right on top of that flower. So now you can see there's that dimension, but look at how that one pops out. And now we're gonna use this on a card. So I have some pieces cut here already. And our basic white layer, <clears throat> we're going to emboss with a new embossing folder. And I can't for the life of me remember what this one's called. So you'll have to check that list of supplies over on my website. So let me go run that through the machine and I'll be right back. Okay, can you see that? And what's kind of fun, if you flip it over, it, it looks a little bit different on both sides. So you could pick either side. And we're gonna put some adhesive on this. Now when I show you my original sample, you'll see I used a different embossing folder. So anything goes, we just want some, some texture. So we're gonna adhere that on there. And then I have some of the paper here already cut. Let's see, this is looks like a half inch strip. Now remember these measurements are over my blog post so you can, I can never remember them to tell you and this way you don't have to write them down either. You can go check those out. So adhesive on there and we're gonna stick that one just over a little bit further like so. So we're just kind of building the focal point layer here of our card. And we're not gonna put dimensionals underneath this because we already have it under just the flower. We're gonna put that right over everything. And then we have basic white thick. Whenever I make a card and white is my cardstock base, I use that thick. Um, regular Whisper White's a little bit thinner than colored cardstock, so when you use that thick, it does give your card a little bit more substance, I guess I'd call it. Okay. Let's put that on there. Now let's just add a few little things to dressy this up a little bit. Now we're gonna do a bow, but I'm gonna do this a little bit different than normal. We're gonna go kind of big here. Um, and we are gonna tie a big bow. Usually I do a little tiny one and stick it down, but we want a big one. So let's see, let's just get that big. We want those loops to be a little bit different sizes. And then, see it's kind of big, kind of sloppy. We have these strings coming down. We might have to trim these off a little bit later. And then we wanna make the center part, don't pull it super tight so it's real bulky. You wanna get it as flat as you can get it where that center piece is. And then we're gonna take a glue dot. Let's see, let's stick that on there, there we go. And we're gonna plop that here and you'll see what's, I mean, it, it looks kind of ugly like it is right now, but hang on. And then let's grab some matte black dots and we will use, oops, that's not the one I want. Where is my other one? I have two of these take your pick tools so that I can use, have different ends showing all the time. And we're gonna just pop on a couple of black dots here. I like, I'm in love with these. I like doing, whoops, we forgot it there, dimensionals or, embellishments like this and I tend to do three of them that just is a really nice pleasing number to see okay that's done so the only other thing we need to do is add a greeting and I'm going to actually do that off camera because I didn't pre-emboss it and I am going to pull in my original card and you can see here I just took a greeting from that same stamp set I embossed it in white on black. If you don't know how to do heat embossing, leave me a comment and we'll link you to another video because I like to do it you know, every once in a while, but I think people get bored if I show that all the time. But you can see how I layered it over the bow. And when I finish this one, you'll see it goes over it. So the bow's all coming out from behind it just to give it a little bit different look. And here, look at the difference in the blacks. This original one, I did not use the Stamparatus, so I didn't stamp it a couple of times. Look at how much darker I am. And you can also see here, I stamped it once, and then I colored it, and I cut it out and put it on here. But look at the difference at you know having that nice vibrant black that you get back after using those Stampin' Blends on top of that ink. So that's my little tip and trick today for Stampin' Blends. If you like to have that black image nice and crisp, 
go ahead and use your Stamparatus to stamp it so that you can stamp it a second time when you're all done. So I hope you liked the project today and the tips I shared. Make sure to check out my blog post for more information. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I am here to help you in any way that I can. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator and help you any way I can to learn and to make um, and enjoy the hobby of card making. So until I stamp with you again, have a stamp happy day.